Hello, everyone. Welcome to Telling Tales. Welcome to a new series. Feels like a while since we've done this, or at least that I've done this um, on Wednesdays. So that's quite nice. You're here to watch Blade Runner, of course. The um, specifically the adaptation of Blade Runner as a TTRPG from Free League, as I'm sure you know. Um, this lovely book here, um, and what we're going to be playing through is uh, Electric Dreams, which is the first published case file for it by um, by Free League. So if you hate the story, don't blame me. You won't. It's great. Um, it's part of the starter set, which I also got as part of the Kickstarter thing, uh, because we're all addicted to material things. Um, yeah, it should be good. It should be a really good time. Um, I'm not being sarcastic. That's just how my voice sounds. So uh, before we start talking about the game we're going to play and bringing people on and all that good stuff, it's time for the usual terrifying promo section. Uh, if you check down below this video, you'll find a number of links, links to Twitch, links to YouTube. You can, of course, find us on those websites. Uh, there's also links to our Discord, our Patreon, our social media, our merch store, blah, 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 blah all that great stuff. Um, at the moment, it's also worth mentioning, and I will sling the link for this in chat. Uh, we are also running a Kickstarter campaign uh, for our first TTRPG zine. Uh, it's called The Soft, um, and it is a massive... Uh, pillow fort sphere for use in the Troika setting, um, which uh, unless you know Troika, that will sound real weird, and if you know Troika, it sounds real weird and also awesome. Um, so yeah, have a look at, for that if you want. There's a link in chat. You can also just Google um, or go to Kickstarter and search for the soft TTRPG and it'll turn up. Yeah, if you're interested, mm, sling us some backing. Why not? Um, we run weekly shows here on Twitch and then pop them on YouTube. Uh, at the moment, Mondays is Warhammer. Uh, Wednesdays is now this, Blade Runner, for uh, the next few weeks at least until we complete Electric Dreams. Um, and Thursdays is currently alternating between Wicked Ones and The Big Wet. Uh, we also have a, there's a bunch of other stuff returning to the channel soon. We'll have Simbroom, uh, we'll have The Yellow King, we'll have Call of Cthulhu, all these wonderful good things. We've got a, a series of We Deal in Lead bubbling in the works. Um, so lots to look forward to as well. Uh, we run uh, monthly one shots as well, the most recent, which was this Sunday, just gone. We played Death in Space for the second time. And next month, we should have two one shots, another Troika one playing through our setting, excitingly. Um, and also a return to June. Hmm, why would we be doing a June one-shot in March of 2024? It's a puzzle to me. I can't think of any reason, and I'm sure you can't either, but either way. Okay, Blade Runner. Let's, uh, let's talk about Blade Runner. Um, and to avoid... Like it's often quite nice to to bring the uh, the players we have on as their characters arrive in a kind of intro sense, but also I'm going to talk a bit about Blade Runner and how Blade Runner plays before we start, and it feels weird to do that and just see their faces at the bottom of my screen. Like I can't see them nodding and agreeing; they're just like blurs. So we will bring everyone on. Um, and uh, who are our players for this series? Uh, well, firstly, uh, we've got Alex, um, who some of you will know as uh, a, more of a one-shot player of ours. I think this is uh, Alex's first time in a series. Um, and Alex will play Willem Novak, but we'll get into the characters later. First, it's just the people, you know? Hi, Alex. How are Hi. you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. Yes, trying to blade uh, runner find my brain after uh, a busy day of work. Be Excellent. I see you've got a competing sci-fi franchise on your... I do. Coincidentally. Basically, every t-shirt I own is inescapably some kind of sci-fi franchise-themed sure. thing. Sure. I mean, it's a much later franchise, but also a much deader one. So, <laughs> Don't yeah. depress me. Don't say these things. <laughs> uh, but I love it so. Um, and by that, I mean serenity and uh, depressing you. So, um, <laughs> yes. in addition to Alex, we have Inga... Uh, Inga is going to be playing Fenner. Hi, Inga. How's it going? I'm struggling to find the mute button. Uh, yes, good, thanks. Apart from that. Great start. Great start. <laughs> um, I will uh, do a wee bit of a spoiler here in that I don't know if it was the inspiration why Inga chose. These are all pre-generated characters for the story. Uh, and I don't know if it's why Inga chose this pre-generated character. Uh, but I... I, I she is smiling already, so I think it probably is. Did you choose this character because they have a cat? I didn't know. That was something yeah. that I actually didn't even spot on the character sheet until after we <laughs> picked 
to which characters we were going to be. Um, but right. uh, when I did see it, I was like, that's kind of appropriate. I've even got cats on my mugs. So yeah, crazy cat lady right here. Yeah. But you did the, the cat in the background there can be a good prop. Um, yeah. For, for yeah. play. Uh, but your cat is real. Um, as opposed Mine to is real. Yes. Not a secondhand animoid cat. Yeah. No. Um, adding to this already limitlessly talented group um, is Stephen. Steven, Hello. Regular Wednesday night Stephen, as, as you're known. Down the pub? No. Um, Just probably not, because you're not at the pub on Wednesdays. You're playing Simba Room online. More's the pity. More's <laughs> the pity. Uh, there we go. How are you, Stephen? I am um, uh, within acceptable tolerances. Good. Good. Um, you've you've passed your baseline tests. You are uh, verified as a, an at least nominally sapient being. Yes. Um, yeah. I am. I am here in uh, body and in what remains of my mind and spirit as well. It's funny because I always feel like I'm a, at a place in with my mind, but what remains of my body. Um, right. So you know. Switch a switcheroo. Um, and finally, uh, another Wednesday night stalwart, we have Sam uh, playing uh, Olsen Backer and not a changeling ranger. You never know. Changelings could be any. It's true. It's it's true. That would be a real crossover if we could achieve that. <laughs> um, Simba runner. That works. That kind of works. Um, Blader room. No. <laughs> Blader room. Um, <laughs> Yeah, how are you, Sam? I'm doing good. I'm very excited, both that we're back on Wednesdays, because it has been a couple of weeks, and also to be playing Blade Runner. Exciting, something a bit new. Seems seems cool. The Excellent. rule book has got me excited, so. It's always a good, good start. start. Um, definitely better than the rule book, having you intimidated or alienated or any of these things. Okay, folks, we need to talk a little bit about Blade Runner how it works i'm not going to do a big rules breakdown we'll introduce them as they you know as the rules crop up uh but we need to talk a bit about the setting uh both for those who have not encountered blade runner and for those who have um and we need to talk about how the structure of this game works and how our players might want to take advantage of that to, to like play in a certain way in order to to encourage their success rather than block themselves from success um so first of all, obviously the uh, the Blade Runner um, setting is a classic cyberpunk style setting uh, made famous, shockingly, by the Blade Runner film uh, from the early '80s, and then again by the sequel, uh, which came out. Well, I'm gonna like every time I think of a, a, a film from the 2010s, I'm like a few years ago, and then I realize it's probably about a decade old or something. Um, but Blade Runner 2049 came out in the 2010s. Um, it portrays a world uh, post several apocalypses uh, where society on Earth is just clinging on to this kind of like toxic. Uh, hellscape battered by nuclear war, um, technological collapse, societal and economic collapse, uh, certainly ecological collapse, and humanity is either doing quite well for itself off-world in colonies, or on Earth with a very few people being on top of society and most of the people being on the bottom in a very uh, dystopian sense. Um, this dystopia is aided and abetted by the presence of replicants who are bioengineered humans. And it's worth mentioning this because, as I said to the players beforehand, a weird amount of people out there, both people who watched it and haven't, think that replicants are robots. And we should probably make sure that people know they're not. They are bioengineered humans uh, created to be... Um, shall we use... I'm sure a lot of people will in universe will use a euphemism, labor, uh, but essentially they are created to be slaves, um, to perform kind of services within society that other people either don't want to do or that there's way too much demand for just humans to carry them out. Um, through the course of uh, the films and the timeline, uh, mankind's relationship with replicants has swung wildly about. Uh, but often has required the uh, use of spe specified, uh, kind of a specified sub-police force um, 
dedicated to capturing or retiring um, wayward replicants. Um, for a long period, this was all replicants, um, because after a um, devastating technological collapse called the Blackout in 2022, um, which was blamed on the replicants, there was a replicant prohibition. So all replicants were banned, both from manufacture and from being on Earth. Um, this was repealed about a year ago from our timeline, okay? Um, our game is in 2037, and in 2036, uh, replicants started being created again and started being introduced again, um, and a lot of them ended up being funneled into this replicant detective force, essentially, who are informally known as Blade Runners. Don't ask why. I think the answer is because the people who made the original movie thought it sounded cool. Yeah, Ridley Scott liked the thing, right? That's it. That's pretty much it. Um, and that's roughly all you really need to know. Um, replicants, uh, as I say, operate in human society. Some humans uh, don't mind them, some humans don't care, and some humans are pro-replicant, and lots of other humans are virulently anti-replicant. So it's a real kind of like flashpoint within society. And obviously you can imagine a year after replicants being introduced and a bunch of the people who were meant to control the replicants now being replicants is probably leading to some, some stress and strain. Um, so that's the setting. That's where we are. We're in the uh, colossal conurbation of Los Angeles, which now takes up most of um, California. For those of you who are big old fans of Blade Runner 2049, obviously that film is 12 years in the future, so there will be some differences here, but a lot of the world you know from that film is definitely familiar to this film. Um, in terms of how the game runs and how this might help or hinder um, the players, uh, all the players are playing Blade Runners. Two of our players are replicants, and two of our players are humans. Um, just in case, uh, again, if people are fans of the original film, our two replicants know they are replicants. Uh, because that's definitely a thing from the original film that people, some replicants don't know they are. Um, but everyone knows what they are. In terms of how the game runs, it's highly investigatory, as you might imagine. And it operates on a system of um, what are called shifts, okay? Uh, there's four shifts a day, so each represents about six hours. And with it, basically, if a scene happens of any size or significance at all, not like a little bit of a conversation or whatever, but you know, you go to a place and do some sleuthing, that's a shift. There, as I said, there are four shifts in the day, but every after every three shifts, uh, humans need a downtime shift where they don't necessarily have to entirely go to sleep, but they need to go home or they need to do something to relieve stress or their stress number starts ratcheting up. Replicants can go four shifts without that, but they still do need downtime. So what this means is you have to balance this kind of off and on, and you also have to think, because a lot of stuff happens on the clock, uh, you're going to have to get things done pretty fast in terms of taking up these shifts. So what that means is, as a group of four, you will have to really make some value judgments on because only one scene can happen per shift per person, do you all go together to a thing? Because that's the entire shift gone. Do you split up into two, two pairs? Then you can get two things done in the shift. So on and so forth. Um, as I say, the clock is ticking. I would encourage people not to think they have too many days to carry this out. Um... I'll I'll just go. I'll definitely go straight. Ahead. I'll, I'm happy giving you this. If this, if the, you know, we're talking less than a week. I will definitely say that. Definitely less than a week. Um, and obviously, if you, uh, and you, what you have to balance essentially is like, if it's dangerous, more of you is better. But also for just general sleuthing, more is better, right? Because. You might spot things other people don't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, does that sound uh, about about right? Yeah, 
Sounds, Sounds like it's going to be difficult. <laughs> Sounds squeaky. It is squeaky. Um, okay, there we go. Um, with that in mind, then, I think we won't um, necessarily... Uh, let me think about whether I want to have you go through the characters first. But I don't think I do. I think I, instead, will actually introduce one character. Um, no, you know what? We're not even going to do that. I'm changing my mind on the fly here, folks. It's crazy. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put a handout in our Discord, uh, and everyone can read it, but it's specifically, uh, Inga, this has been received by Fenner, okay? Um, it's specifically uh, Fenner's thing that she has received. Uh, so that's in the Discord now. And then we'll, uh, we'll just start moving into things. So, Los Angeles, May 2037. Toxic rain is pouring down over the city, where gigantic buildings dwarf ancient skyscrapers. Light from huge billboards flashes along the streets and wipes across the crowds of pedestrians in Sector 5, Little Tokyo. The White Dragon Noodle Bar is crowded with customers, sitting on stools, slurping their food out of bowls. Veteran Blade Runner Willem Novak is among them, enjoying a few days of hard-earned rest and reading today's Independent Sentinel newspaper. So, we're going to kick off with Alex's character. I did also mention there the uh, the Independent Sentinel newspaper, and we are also going to... Now, here's a question. Where did I... Yes, I did it there. Um, people are welcome to read the newspaper whenever they would like. Uh, that is also in our Discord and contains information that may or may not be relevant. Um, but, uh, Willem, I tell you what, you are sat, as I said, at this noodle bar reading this newspaper. Why don't you have a very quick glance at that newspaper I put in the Discord, and you just tell me which headline catches Willem's eye out of any of them. Don't need to go into detail, just like what, what pops out of that front page for you. I'll put a little... Uh, okay. Share it up on screen as well. Mm. If I can do that, I can. I, I mean, it's a <clears throat> maybe a shot in the dark thing, but I think it would be the, uh, in a cynical way, it would be the, uh, the sort of a new life awaits you ad, right? And it would be sort of the reading that with a sort of jaded eye knowing that that's impossible <laughs> you know certainly for you yeah exactly yeah you're never getting off this rock exactly um absolutely uh well as you are reading that uh perhaps with a uh, a slight uh a slight sneer for it uh you uh become aware of the the man at the counter uh, next to you, who is uh, sort of kind of glancing over at you in a uh, what he thinks is a surreptitious way, but which is almost certainly not for someone used to kind of noticing uh, everything around them as a matter of survival. Um, and he kind of glances over you and, and, and looks up and down and, and goes, where, where, where have I seen you before? I've been around a lot of places. Be more specific. He looks a little bit drunk. I I know you. You were uh, about 10 years back. There was an accident at the factory. Turns out there was uh, a skin job on the line. So on found out and they stabbed them up. You were there, weren't you? <sighs> Maybe I was. I've seen a lot. It's uh 
all blurs into one, you know. I don't know what they're fucking doing now. Well, half of you lot shouldn't be there. You can't tell me that's right. He's sort of slightly reeling on his seat. He, he's clearly very intoxicated. Look, pal, I'm just trying to enjoy my noodles and my newspaper. All right. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. You enjoy your noodles. He doesn't sound like directly aggressive, but you know. Um, either way, he's uh, soon slightly distracted as the uh, the rain that's kind of coming down on the roof of the noodle bar sluices uh, horizontally for a second in the path of a spinner coming down to the ground nearby. Uh, it comes to a halt. Um, a quick glance at it tells you it's um, it's definitely an RDU spinner. And someone gets out of the doorway to it. Inga, could you describe Fenner for me, please? Um, yeah, she has got uh, short, dark hair, slightly wavy. Uh, she like fairly sharp featured, um, wearing. Uh, well, I was going to say wearing largely kind of uh, you know black, like reasonably like nondescript. But I'm I, 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 I just suddenly thinking like who wouldn't have like uniform? Would we? We're like. You know, yeah, you're detectives, yeah, you're playing clothes. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, good. Um, um, yeah, and I guess she uh, she comes in and has a just a sort of quick scan, and I think probably, I mean, I, I'm assuming that from my file or whatever, I would I would know what Novak looks yeah, like. Yeah, you know what you know what Novak looks like. Although we don't, do we? So, Alex, do you want to describe Willem Novak for us, please? If I was smart, I probably would have clipped their their actual images. I'll do that for next week, so we can we can see. Yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll, I guess I'll, I'll refer to the the character sheet has a nice image in it, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Willem Novak is a a black man in I would say it's hard to judge age because this being a dystopia. I Sure, I calculated it earlier just right. for shits and giggles. I think he's 54. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say 50 yeah, is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got like very short, like close cropped graying hair, um, and uh like a little bit of a a little bit of a sort of a goatee, um uh just sort of on the on the chin, and um and he's wearing what is probably like quite a quite a bulky weathered black jacket um to keep the elements at bay um it's got a quite a sort of uh i, I guess sort of a, a sort of a rugged urban pragmatic kind of dress sense to him i suppose um, sure yeah yeah um absolutely and you know what um inga has that handout Go, go ahead. You know what needs to happen. Uh, so uh, I think I will pull up a seat next to Novak and um, basically introduce myself. Benna, are you Novak? Christ, what does a guy have to do to just eat noodles in peace around here? Yeah. Sorry, I know that you're on leave, but I'm afraid you'll need it urgently. You know, urgently that's... Thing. The word leave seems to have lost its meaning today. Sure. Uh, are we going down to the station then? Uh, yes. Um, I am sorry about this, but orders are orders. Um, all right, and he he just sort of like chucks his like chopsticks <laughs> with undisguised disgust into the bowl, you know, sort of it splashes, and yeah, he just takes off. Absolutely, um, you make your way to the spinner, sort of navigating around a, a religious group, uh, moving through the streets, dressed in saffron robes with bells tied to their ankles, um, kind of uh, chanting and singing as they they move through the. Uh, splashing puddles. Uh, your spinner uh, gives uh, the usual kind of 
grinding and hissing and roaring sounds as it uh, lifts off and roars into the air. Um, you're gliding through the rain-soaked city between massive skyscrapers uh, high above the street bustle towards the LAPD tower. Um, is the uh, you know what's the atmosphere like inside the spinner? Are you are you talking? Are you being politely quiet? Uh, I think unusually, I won't instigate. Become like I think that that was uh, easier than I was expecting to get him into the spinner to begin with. So <laughs> I'll let him quietly stew if that's what he wants to do. Um, seeing as he's cooperating so far. Yeah, I, I think Novak is is basically in a mindset of he knows that he this is not a thing he can refuse, but he doesn't have to like it. <laughs> so he's just sort of staring out of the cityscape as it goes by, you know. He knows he'll find out what he needs to know, and there's no point now, you know. There's no point hustling for it. No. Uh okay then. Uh then before long, uh the spinner is circling down. Um, to land on the LAPD tower, uh, you exit, and before long, you are walking into uh, the deputy chief's office. Uh, the deputy chief is called Holden. Uh, there are ceiling fans churning uh, the smoke-filled air. Um, the aging Holden is wheezing from the synthetic lungs he got uh, 18 years earlier, and is um, currently talking to two individuals who are already stood in the office. Um, one of them is stood quite, um, not exactly at attention, because you're not military, but kind of like attentively and formally in front of the desk. Uh, perhaps I can imagine with his hands sort of, you know, behind, held behind his back in, a, in an attentive position. Stephen, could you describe Percival for me, please? Yeah, so um, Percival is a, uh, I think, quite a youngish looking guy. Um kind of fresh faced very clean cut uh sort of swept back kind of brownish hair um and the character portrait doesn't show but i i imagine y you know he's going to be in like a like a shirt and like you know reasonably sort of smartly dressed i think yeah i think so especially because like the world of blade runner like right it has like the fashion in it is sort of this mismatch this kind of mashup of like cyberpunkish but also sort of retro noirish right and i imagine yeah. that kind of like old-fashioned office like an old-fashioned journalist or, or or cop right like maybe suspenders and a thin tie sort of vibe yeah um, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. um and then stood, uh, you probably don't notice her at first, stood nearer the back of the office, kind of more in shadow, is uh, someone with probably a bit more of an intimidating build. Um, Sam, do you want to describe Olsen for us? Yeah, so Olsen is quite a tall woman, long black hair, kind of late 20s, probably a stern-ish look on her face, um, wearing kind of practical, but kind of bland like grays and blacks clothing maybe like a synthetic jacket and cargo trousers or something with heavy boots just uh stood back and taking in what the this uh, person is saying uh absolutely um holden kind of looks up as the two of you enter and kind of uh, waves you in and waves you over to there's a like a scattering of vaguely uncomfortably looking chairs um, in front of his uh, desk, and he uh, he just goes, sit down, sit sit down. <laughs> uh, is everyone going to sit down? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. We have uh, an urgent situation. Uh, last night there was a shooting in Sector One. <clears throat> in a sordid place snake pit nightclub row you've probably been there <clears throat> two nexus nines serial numbers uh lh3793 sn9148 um Lear and sandor code names you i don't know if you've uh, seen them around Anyway, 
<laughs> Sandor was shot dead. Lear is missing. We've got uh, we've got no idea where they are, where she is. Um, I will roll a die for something at this point. Give me one second. Actually, before I do that, you know what? I will pop um, two more handouts that Holden pops over towards you on his desk, and we will also have those pop up on screen. Uh, if I can do it. Yes. So there is there is one of them. Uh, that is Sandor's profile. Uh, the uh, Blade Runner who he says has been shot dead. And I'll pop the other one up in a second. Uh, but I will also wanted to register something if I can just remember yes okay um so let me just roll a die for this out of interest no actually we won't roll a die I think I I know um Fenner you worked with Sandal before briefly on a case See, seemed like a good Blade Runner. Were they on a, and, were they on a mission it. at the time? Of course. Of course. Everyone's everyone's on assignment all the time. <laughs> uh, they went to the snake pit investigating some suspect Nexus 8 activity. We don't know if that's what triggered it. <laughs> uh, according to local cops, witnesses said there were human supremacists at the club. Maybe that had something to do with it. Just don't know. They definitely could have pulled the trigger. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll read all about it in Kill tomorrow. Um, Kill is a Generally speaking, a kind of gun nuts magazine, but specifically has a massive readership of um, human supremacists. Uh, Olsen, uh, worth just a quick note for you. Um, the editor of this magazine, you've had run-ins with this guy before. So whether that helps or hinders potential investigation, who knows? Um, given your character, I'm sure you can tell whether those were positive <laughs> or negative, yeah. Um, you need to uh, you need to figure this out, and fast. I've got the brass breathing down my neck on this. Uh, Nexus Nine approved for use just last year. Mistrust running high. If someone out there is killing, kidnapping Nexus Nine detectives. We need to find them and stop them fast. <laughs> he has like a, a slight uh, coughing fit um, that has an odd kind of mechanical tinge to it that goes on for uh, a couple of minutes, which is uh, also my, um, you know, method of saying if anyone wants to ask any questions at this point, it's a good opportunity. Um, I don't know whether this would be with any kind of briefing notes and things, but like, you know, would we have, uh, and if not, I guess just ask some questions about like, do we like, do we have Sandor's body and any forensics from that and any, you know, CCTV equivalents and that, that kind of, the, any other, what's the other evidence we've got of, to kind of start, start our starting point for the investigation, I guess. Um, absolutely. Um, and you know what? Uh, he's, uh, he, you know what? He's going to kind of wave to you as if I'm getting to that sort of thing. I, it's in my script anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, is anyone else taking... Because I'd say this is a couple of minutes. Is anyone else taking the opportunity to like look over these profiles, ask Holden or like ask Holden something or ask or like mention anything to each other? Because he's like handing these out to you now. So you can 
like take and look at them. Um, and in fact, while you come up with anything you might have, and it's fine to have nothing, I would just, <laughs> yeah, I would. Someone's already answered in the chat. Someone said Holden was killed in in the first film. He shot, but he uh, in a later scene they mention he's just about still alive, but he might die. And in the game, he has not clearly he recovered and is now the deputy chief. Anyway, um, yeah, he's the Blade Runner in the first scene. If anyone's curious, in in the original film. Um, do we think this might be connected to the to the other missing? Is is this considered an isolated case to run, or can should we be drawing lines between other missing replicants? That's for you to find out, isn't it? I hope as hell not. I hope this is just a case of some supremacist assholes shooting down Sandor and getting their hands on Leah. And understand when I say that that sounds like the best case scenario and that should tell you how bad that is <clears throat> look the Wallace Corporation is pushing hard on this already the business depends on this new breed of replicants and anything that jeopardizes that would be a major blow to their bottom line they're letting us run this investigation, but they have offered their assistance. They've got a PR manager, Quell. She's expecting you at Wallace Corp HQ. Tell you more about Leah. Play nice with them. I mean it. Other than that, do any way you like. Split up. I don't care as long as I get results. And fast. You've got the full resources of the RDU. Sandor's body is being processed down at the crime lab right now. You can check the LAPD mainframe for personnel files, Esper footage of the snake pit. Maybe you'll get lucky. I've uploaded to your KAs all relevant information that we have so far. <clears throat> now get out of here. He seems to be struggling to continue this long conversation a bit. Uh out of character can i can i check one thing what mm -hmm. did did um holden go into any detail about what the nature of their assignment was the two nexus nines he did he mentioned that they were investigating suspected nexus 8 activity great to be brutally honest though that basically describes most blade runner work it's them so. doing their completely standard thing that they do yeah yeah, yeah absolutely so he, he, yeah whether it was like a specific case or they were just generally kind of catching you don't know you feel like if it had been particularly relevant and he wanted it wanted or could tell you he would have told you yeah yeah um was this this shooting was last night like I don't know what time of day it is. I don't know what that is in hours it is, since it happened. Um, you are at the beginning of the morning shift, uh, okay. which means right now it's like, it's going to be late. You know, it's what we'd call late night, though. Late night, early morning, right? It's, okay. it about four, it's about four in the morning right now. And this took place at a club, so it's been only a few hours probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Or like, you know, maybe up to, yeah, somewhere in the region of probably eight to 12 hours ago or four to 12 hours ago, something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, Holden just kind of waves you out of his office and you're left kind of uh, standing in uh, the Deputy Chief's bullpen. I'd like to investigate... Like to... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I'd like to investigate the crime scene while it's fresh. I'd like to speak to this um, this PR person at Wallace Court. There's anything they can do to help with this investigation. I think I want to take a look at the the uh, the body, Sander. I think if uh, we've already had some replicants killed at this place, maybe I better go with you, Percival. Thank you. The the shooting is worrying, but I'm frankly more worried about. Leah being taken and what that might be about. She's not the first. If this is a pattern, if these things are connected, there's something 
we've got to figure that out. Yeah, we need to we need to piece together what happened to that club. Um, and figure out what that means. Okay. Um, can we assume Matt that generally, like, you know, we'll have, like, we'll be reconvening back at the RDU, or is that the kind? Of, is, is that something we should also you, be? You can do that, and if you want to reconvene, I'm not going to like charge you a shift for that reconvening unless it, unless you end up going to like the, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, the mainframe and doing like research. So if you do something beyond just chatting, then yes, I will charge you for the shift. But otherwise, no. You can also communicate with each other on your KIAs. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, they act as like you know a, a mob, essentially like a mobile phone as well, but they are kind of wrist. Get a group chat going. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um, so what I will do when people split up for their shifts is I'm going to do them in order of how long it will take you to get the, to get there. Right. I think that's a pretty uh, sort of neat way of doing it. Um, and in the first case, it's really no surprise. That the quickest, the quickest location visited will be the crime lab in the same building. So, um, obviously, we're going to like build up character relationships and stuff later. For now, let's just let's just go into our first shift and get a feel for how it works, right? Um, while you're uh, while you're heading, uh, head all heading off to your various places. So let's stick with Willem, okay? Uh, Willem, you uh, walk through the LAPD headquarters. And when I say it's the same building, this is a colossal building. So it's probably going to take you about half an hour to like walk the corridors, go down the elevators and stuff till you find yourself at the crime lab. Um, but when you do, you know, it's definitely an environment you ha are familiar with. Um, as you uh, as you might imagine, you've been here a number of times before, um, sort of fairly cold, sterile environment as as you would hope it would be really um it's uh it's like a combination like crime lab and morgue um and, and as you walk in there you are um kind of uh eyed up by by two individuals um one is the uh, unofficial LAPD office cat, um, entirely uh, counterintuitively for the Blade Runner setting called Biscuits. Um, it's a large kind of ginger tabby, obviously not real. Um, it's an animoid, um, which is why it's allowed around, right? Because it's it is sterile. Sterile, yeah, um, yeah. And it's kind of like eyeing you up from uh, a kind of filing cabinet as you walk in. And uh, the other is behind a desk nearby, filling out some paperwork. Um, and they are the chief medical examiner of the uh, LAPD. They are called Coco. And you've dealt with them before. They're somewhat cool and aloof, um, but perfectly competent and uh, perfectly helpful when the need arises. Okay. Uh, yeah, Willem sort of nods his head to Coco, who I assume he would have had dealings with numerous times yeah uh, yeah yeah you've, yeah you've dealt with him yeah uh coco um i know it's early uh what's the progress with uh the sandor body take a look yourself been a while since i've seen you here novak yeah, well, I'm supposed to be on leave, but, you know, I guess they didn't get the memo. So yeah. he nods and picks like a, it looks like a kind of boil sweet, but, you know, from experience, it'll be some kind of horrendous artificial sweetener kind of rendered into the a similar shape and kind of pops it in his mouth before he walks over to the uh, kind of the, the examination room door, kind of opens it and, and beckons you in. Okay. He follows. Um, you recognize immediately that the uh, the body on the slab is the the man you saw in the uh, the profile for Sandor. Um, he uh, uh, the dead N nine has a very large hole in his chest. 
So, you know, there's there's clearly not a lot to do on cause of death. Um, yeah. He just kind of waves towards the body in a kind of like, have at it kind of way. A lot of Blade Runners kind of... Because a lot of Blade Runners have odd different set, knowledge sets. Mm. So he's probably used to people perhaps doing a bit of the work themselves. Right. Which you can try to do, or you can equally just, you know, get him. <laughs> he is the chief I'll, medical examiner. I'll, 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 I'll take the... I'll take a run at it. Um, sure. Okay. Well, and that'll allow us to take make a roll, won't it? So, yeah, and we love making yeah. a roll. I, I was going to say one of one of the. I don't know. I just feel like he would do this. I don't have a specific reason, but I feel like almost idly he would walk around to the head uh, end and just sort of, you know, like pull down the the lower. Eyelid yeah, like or something roll back to check the, eye and, check and the serial. Double check. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can absolutely do that. I know in um, 2049 they have like a little, like almost like a card. It looks like a little card thing that they hold out and it like mm. reads it. Maybe it's the back of your KIA or something like that. Sure. Um, but yes, you can do that. No problem. It is, it, this is an N9 replicant and they have the same serial code as Sandor did on his profile. Okay. Yeah, I think I think in terms of getting us into our first role, I would like to look at the gunshot wound and try to ascertain um, the, at the very least, the sort of caliber of firearm. You know, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, in order to do that, let's just walk how through how roles work, right? So you have, as you do in most free league games, two kind of distinct sets of stats. Um, he said, hoping he's naming them right as they are in other Year Zero inspired games. Uh, you've got attributes and skills. Yes? Is that what they turn them in this? Yes, excellent. Um, attributes are like the base stats. Skills are the more advanced ones. Each of those will have a different uh, size dice running from D6 through D8, D10 to D12s. Um, they're also... I, I don't know quite why they've done it via grading in this from A, B, C, D. A being the largest, D being the lowest. But they have done that as well. But hopefully on a sheet it says both, the letter and the, the die, yeah. Um, so what you'll want to do is uh, what um, attribute does medical aid come under? Intelligence. Okay. So what I need you to do is roll intelligence. Now, how this works is you take the die uh, signified by your intelligence, which is a... D8. D8. Uh, you take the die signified by your medical aid, which is D6. D6. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to roll them. Not, uh, you don't add the results, but what you're doing is looking for anything six or over. So basically on those two dice, on a D8 and a D6, you've got those two dice chances to get a six or over on either dice. Uh, sixes are successes. The more sixes you get, the better. And that's pretty much it. Um, there are additional rules, but we can come to them later. We might even come to one of them if you fail this one. I was about to ask, do I need to decide whether I push before or can I push no, after? You explicit, okay. you you wouldn't want to push before you roll because it's right. a re-roll. So oh, you explicitly okay. have to roll before you choose whether to push. But we'll Great. see. We'll see whether that happens. You might go roll in on my online dice. Oh, I got an eight and a four, so it's one. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You got you got one success. Cool. Um, I mean, there's not a huge amount to tell about the wound, but, um, you know, you could have got this from large, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> this looks like a wound, um, a large caliber weapon, which, again, you, you could have guessed just by glancing. Uh, but you think it's large enough that it is a large caliber weapon at point blank range. Like, it's a right. big hole. Like pressed to the so if they're in a nightclub, it's like they're both on the dance floor. It's like put there and yeah, yeah. It, it, like if it wasn't pressed to his chest, it can't have been more than a couple of inches away from it. Sure, okay. Um, and you know this is you know he he probably died almost instantly. Like there's not a lot less of his, of his chest cavity. So, that, would, but that's would, it really. Would you say that that compares to? Like I, I, I don't, I, I know you might not want to get like bogged down into mm, yeah, too yeah, much nitty gritty, but like so, RDU uh, weapons would be like the blaster, right? Which is a mm -hmm. forty-four special. Would you say it's like yeah, yeah. comparable in power? 
you'd think it's pretty comparable in power. It's worth noting yeah. there are a lot of guns that also yeah. will will do that, not least yeah. of which are ones that aren't pistols. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, well, it was clearly yeah, an yeah, inside yeah, yeah. job, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no but having said that, a 44 from uh yeah, an RDU blaster would absolutely leave this kind of hole, you think. Gotcha. You've never put your gun point blank to someone's chest and pulled the trigger, but you can yeah. imagine it would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. That's good. <clears throat> so, I, uh, uh, oh, go on. There's not a lot to go with, but um, Novak, I think he's dead. Well, Coco, that medical degree really pays for itself. Large caliber, point blank. Not a lot else to go with. Not unless you bring it back to me. Uh, at the risk of having to flip this guy over, I assume it exited. It did. And they didn't recover it. Well, Any... let me rephrase that. They probably want you to recover it. Yeah, that seems like a me job, doesn't it? Uh, any reports of anyone hit secondarily by this? No, I think there was some kind of brawl going on, but no one else came in. It seems like it wouldn't what's have happened the, on the dance floor then. What's what's with his partner? Is she missing? Yeah, missing. No sign at the moment. Well, sooner or later this is going to happen when you let them on the job. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well... I think if I had to be one, I'd rather be this guy right now. Pretty bleak, Novak. But on brand. That's what they pay me for. All right, well, I'm not going to find anything else out here, I don't think, unless you've got some uh, miracle up your sleeve of uh, deductive reasoning. I can only deal with what they bring me, so bring me something. I'll make that my next job. All right, Coco. He uh, nods and uh, kind of walks back to his desk, lets you out, and closes, kind of closes the examination door behind you, sits at his desk. Uh, as you walk out of the room, um, Biscuit sort of like suddenly kind of like jumps up on his legs and kind of like mimics a, a stretching cat in what you have to assume is just extremely good programming. Um, eyes you lazily and then curls up and goes back to sleep. Okay, let's go to our next area. And the next closest location, I think, is going to be uh, Wallace Corporation HQ. So, um, it's, it is still under construction at this point. Um, and you do see it in... Um, in Blade Runner 2049, for anyone who hasn't seen that. Uh, if you're familiar with the first this first film, but not the second film, the Tyrell Corporation building right in the first film has this almost like like ancient monumental tomb look about it, right? It's like a this huge kind of megalith towering over LA. Uh, and there is one shot in 2049 that I think I missed the first time around, where it shows like the Tyrell Corporation in the foreground. And then the camera moves around, and in the background is the Wallace Corporation, which is a borderline identical building, just about ten times the size. Um, so, but it's still under construction at this point, as I've said. Um, it still, however, towers over the sprawling cityscape, uh, leaving no doubt whatsoever about who wields the ultimate power in Los Angeles in 2037. Uh, this massive building and all the massive buildings uh, across this area are nearly impenetrable without an invitation, um, which you have. Uh, your spinner lands in a huge internal garage, Fenner, um, um, from which you descend into the cavernous and eerily empty interior, constantly cast in a pale golden light um, and the shadows of water, which is, there are odd kind of like, sort of like uh, meditative pools and kind of like Zen areas everywhere, but the walls are also cast with this kind of like flickering reflection of water, even in areas where there isn't any water um, as a kind of like light fixture design, you suppose. Um 
at the front desk, you are received by a hairless file clerk who um, kind of uh, glances up as you come in and says, yes, yes, can I help you? I have an appointment. Well, uh, I'm here to speak with uh, PR uh, for the RDU. Oh, they should be expecting you are, me. You are one of the detectives that Quell is expecting. Absolutely. Please follow me. With a slight incline, he stands up, kind of clad in uh, an odd kind of blackish, almost like a skin suit, and walks you through further um, labyrinthine and, and oddly uh, cast corridors um, until you reach a... Uh, and there's no kind of doorways in here. It's all, like, all the office doors you passed are, like, you know, these large, oddly shaped, sometimes kind of, like, almost pyramidal um, entranceways that lead into various darkened rooms. Uh, and this is the same. You turn off a corridor into a huge, austere, um, and uh, immaculately uh, decorated office uh, where the Wallace Corp VP of Public Relations will receive you. Uh, and I have her mugshot as well. Here we go. There we go. Uh, this is Quell. Uh, as you walk in, she stands up and kind of walks around her desk, something which takes quite a few seconds. Um, and uh, strides over and kind of proffers a hand in a very kind of peremptory and polite fashion. I, I respond in kind, like, um, Quill, um, lovely to meet you. I'm Fenner. I'm here with the RDU. Fenner, just Fenner? Uh, just Fenner. Uh, and uh, I'll, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I will reel off my serial number. To, sure. her, um, to let her know that oh. I am an N9. Excellent. It is wonderful to see a product of the Wallace Corporation excelling in the field. Please take a seat. Thank you. I'll take a seat. Um, uh, it's very kind of you to have reached out about this matter to help with the investigations. Um, it's obviously something you take quite seriously. Um, did you have something in mind already with what you wanted to offer in terms of help or uh, any information you might already have? Yes, well, first I would like to say thank you very much for coming. We do appreciate it. The handling of this case is, it has to be said, of critical importance to the Wallace Corporation. The launch, of course, as you know, was just over a year ago. The public is still getting used to your presence among them. And how we see it here at Wallace is that the survival of society as we know it depends on the smooth integration of Nexus 9. Yes? I agree so completely. Much depends, so much depends on the ability of mankind to reach out to the stars. And thanks to Mr. Wallace, your presence is doing that. As for how we may help you here at Wallace... There is some information we can pass on, but first I would ask, how much are you aware of and how are you planning to continue that investigation? Uh, well, we're already starting to pursue several leads. As you say, it's something that needs to be dealt with. It's, it's a matter of critical importance and I do take it particularly personally as a matter of importance. Um, so uh, we are, uh, the body's being investigated, the crime scene is being investigated. Um, we're considering whether this particular case might relate to some other disappearances. Um, we certainly want to recover Leah. Um, um, you mentioned this. Could you could you give me a, a more in depth description of what you know of this this crime itself, please? Uh, we understand that uh, Leah and Sondor were. Uh, on a case, uh, and they were at the, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, where did snake, we say it was? Snake pit. Snake pit. Snake pit. Um, the, the snake pit, um, and that Sondor was shot. Um, uh, the details of that, as I say, the body's being investigated at the moment. I don't have further information at the moment, but we understand that he was shot dead. The body is, is at the LAPD, um, it's at the RDU. Um, Leah has gone missing. Uh, we are obviously going to look uh, be looking to find her um 
that's that's the information that I have from my initial briefing. Obviously, we're now having to pursue those lines of investigation to get more information. Yes, I see. Well, I, I suppose I should commend you for your promptness in coming here, which obviously is the reason why you're still relatively early on in this investigation. There are some things that perhaps we could help you with here at Wallace. Um, I would first, um, clearly there's not an awful lot I can tell you that would be useful about Paul Sandor. Um, however, Leah, the missing replicant, this is of the most concern to us. We are sadly aware that many replicants will die in the course of their duties, but perhaps something can still be done for Leah, yes? With that in mind... Yes, I agree. Um, I, I think this is something... Uh, recovering Leah and figuring out why she was taken in the first place, utmost mm. importance. Well, I can give you some information about Leah. She was an early Nexus 9 model, uh, memories designed by the Lilith Memory Lab, one of our subcontractors. Um, uh, the Lim Lilith Memory Lab should be open to, to your approach as a subcontractor of ours. They, of course, uh, are informed to work closely with the RDU when, when such unfortunate instances occur. This, the early Nexus 9s, as you might imagine, perhaps prone to a few more minor expected malfunctions than the later models, such as yourself. Uh, Leah had failed a few baseline tests recently and was brought in for recalibration, a standard procedure. There are tens of millions of N9s being produced, added to which an early model, minor malfunctions are to be expected in rare cases. I think all of this is highly unlikely it had anything to do with her disappearance. I have heard that the snake pit is frequented by these awful human supremacist groups, yes? It seems to be one of those areas, I'm afraid. Inciting hatred and violence against replicants, against you. Against, against me, Fenner. Disgusting. I would personally strongly encourage investigation down these lines. However, the Wallace Corporation is nothing if not open to the LAPD, and we are happy for you to make use of this other information that I have handed over. It's very much appreciated. Thank you so much for, for sharing this information. Um, Matt, um, in terms of uh, baseline, baseline tests and recalibration in particular, like mm -hmm. what level of knowledge would I have about what that specifically entails? And are there any you like, will... you know, rumors or stories about what that can mean and you know, sure. that kind of thing? You, I, I doubt you've undergone recalibration. You will almost certainly have undergone multiple baseline tests. Baseline tests are carried out any time a uh, replicant is seen to be acting in an unusual manner or when just like an, some extra security is needed about their stability. Um, certainly early in your existence, you'll have undergone a lot of ba uh, quite frequent baseline testing. You've probably been baseline tested just a couple of times in the LAPD as well. You might not even know what's triggered the request for that. Maybe someone just thought you acted a bit weird. In your experience, your human colleagues can think that a lot, even when you're not. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly not unusual for a replicant, especially a Blade Runner, to be baseline tested. Recalibration, that's that's more unusual. That's going back into the shop for maintenance, essentially, in as far as that yeah. applies to a bioengineered human. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the me the reference to the memory, like with the early model and the memory being designed by another lab, like mm -hmm. does that particularly, tr you know, like that was that was something that was called out as being different from a Leah type model compared to me, for example. So does that again chime with any rumblings or no, not really. Person? Like you're you're not that 
weirdly, I guess, you're not that au fait with the process of designing yeah. building replicants. Um, you are aware that you, you have memories from before your existence and you know they're fake. Yeah. And as far as you are aware, they are there to help keep you emotionally stable, to give you like an yeah. anchor point, but you are fully aware that they're fake. Yeah. Um, and some you have that feel fond, some not so much, but either way, yeah. yeah. For the completeness of this investigation, would it be possible to get any records of the tests and calibration, anything, recalibration, and any uh, records or files that you might have about, about those things for Leah, uh, in case it helps us with finding where she might have gone or if she has escaped some captors, where she might try to go, anything that could be helpful for us. Oh, I'm I'm afraid once uh, a uh, one of Mr. Wallace's children leaves the factories and and other f associated facilities, they are especially to the LAPD, they are handed over in their entirety. Um, we we cannot give you details of recalibration. I'm afraid those are, are corporate data that that cannot be. Um, handed over without specific uh, um, UN and, and corporate uh, warrants. Uh, I can say, however, that I am absolutely sure that uh, were you to look up these things on the LAPD mainframe, you would almost certainly be able to get more details about uh, these, these perhaps these baseline tests and any other elements of uh, Leah's life that you wish that can be, that can be gathered. Um, let me just, uh, you said an address, didn't you? I think, did you mention an address just then? Um, yeah, like where she might have gone, kind of. Right, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah Quail definitely doesn't know anything like that. Um, if you're after yeah. potential locations, it's worth noting that Leah's profile card that Holden handed you had her address on it. Yeah. Um, okay, and um, so also, I don't know whether this is just a GM can tell me or a role thing, but um, any sense of like whether this is a bit of bullshit? Like, you know, you know, is there a sort of sure. redacted version I could maybe ask for? Or is it essentially a like, no, that information has been given to the LAPD, so I just need to, if I go to the mainframe, I can access it. Sure, or is yeah, this yeah. a bit of bullshit, you know, trying to yeah. get that well, way? Shall we shall we get rather than just this specific thing, do we want to make a role? Mm -hmm. And do we want to make a role for you like reading uh quell here and like getting yeah getting a kind of sense of her okay so what we're going to, to do that. what we're going to do and this is be an opposed role okay um assuming that she actually has stats um i'm assuming she has a stat block let me just double check that um da, 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 da. yes she does um so we're going to do an opposed role now uh, so what you're going to be rolling is your insight um, so that will be Inga, your um, uh, empathy, insight, which is very good, yeah. uh, which is yes, a D12. D10 and a D12. A D10 yeah. and a D12, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, and Quell will be rolling her manipulation by contrast. Um, let me just, ooh, okay. Um, and basically, these opposed roles, very easy. Just who gets more successes? So uh, why don't you make your roll? Tell me how, how many successes you get. Um, uh, that is an eight and a one. And it's worth, well, that's, yeah, that's a one success then. Um, yeah. It's worth noting, by the way, because this is the first time we've had anything over a D10 get rolled. 10s, 11, and 12s are two successes. Uh, not that we got that, but that's fine. Um, so you got one success. Let's check and see how well does. Quell also got one success. Um, I am going to very quickly double check if there's like a concept of like um, advantage. Okay, yeah. The defendant, yeah, the def I, I think it's pretty clear from the writing that the defendant has priority. However, can it I does say, in, yes, only, ad only antagonists can push. So she can't push, but you can. Okay. However, I would say, that you've already rolled a one might disincentivize you from pushing because how pushing works um and i will i will just read this out is um if i can find it on my cheat sheet where have i put it on my cheat sheet um right yeah you get to re-roll 
anything, any die that doesn't show a one, um, and any dice that show one after the reroll will give you a point of stress. Yeah. So you're definitely going to get a point of stress for this. But if you want, you do it. Take that point of stress and roll um, and take your reroll on the oh, other so dice. Because it was because oh sorry hang on so i can't re-roll the one you cannot re-roll the one uh in that case i mm, well i got an eight on my d10 so it was the, oh the right one was yeah, on the yeah, yeah. Then so you can't, i yeah, think there's probably not much point yeah you could re-roll i guess I could, I could technically roll the 10 but yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it i'll leave it low low chance so yeah sure yeah. no problem um yeah okay then uh yeah you can't get a read on quell i mean she's the the pr rep for wallace corporation for a reason yeah she's probably literally been built to bullshit you yeah yeah um and, and would i would i know uh whether so they Obviously, she's talked about um, things like the baseline tests not being something they can hand over, but she said that the Lilith Memory Lab can should also be able to give, uh, you know, should cooperate with the investigation. Um, presumably, yeah. anything that she's saying, yeah, go to the LAPD main mainframe, um, is about things like the baseline test rep and, and the recalibration that we just talked about. The Memory Lab stuff um, would not be like, anything me memory implants would not be included in that information. That's like, no, you don't, you don't data, think so. Right? Like the yeah. reason the data about the baseline test would be in the mainframe is because it was carried out by the LAPD. So gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. ultimately to find out more information about anything, the mainframe is the, the place to do it, to find out like contextual yeah. information. Right. Um, and because she was a blade runner, like her Blade Runner records and stuff will be on there, which will include baseline tests, will include anything unusual, that kind of thing. Um, recalibration, off limits, that's Wallace, Wallace Corp stuff she ain't letting go. Um, yeah. And yeah, the memory lab, she was just basically saying what's a, what was mildly unusual about Leah. So yeah, okay. Take what, that, what you want. Um. um... Uh, I'm aware of at least one other replicant going missing. Um, is there any further information that you have that you think may point to a wider pattern, or are you really just? Uh, is this really about supporting on the investigation into Leah's disappearance at the moment? Um, what? Uh, first, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to know as GM which replicant you're talking about. I am talking about my former partner, my first partner, uh, Radha Udaya, who was oh, my right, first partner okay. in the Rep Detect unit. Uh, she's also gone missing now. Okay. Um, I don't know anything about that because it's... <laughs> I'm pro we, okay. Which is literally <laughs> providing the information to you that that is definitely, as far as I'm concerned, a chicken in a cage situation. I, I yeah, well, I have nothing prepped for that at all. Um, so I'm going to say that Quell just has nothing like yep, um, said replicant seemed perfect doesn't have any kind of extraneous records about that replicant perfectly normal perfectly like fine service records nothing and okay. again suggests that anything accessible to the LAPD will be on the LAPD mainframe yeah I was just wondering whether there might be some sort of like you know they were all the same like early early stage models or you know any of that kind of stuff but like, that's fine um I um, I, I obviously I completely appreciate that any classified information is something you wouldn't be able to share. Is there any uh, any redacted versions or any summaries that uh, of recalibration that might be useful for us? Uh, that wouldn't, of course, nothing that would include any any classified or um, otherwise confidential. If I can cut you off there, Fenner, I'm afraid everything to do with recalibration beyond that the process exists is a classified Wallace Corporation process. I would prefer it if we do not discuss it further. No, of course. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to pry. Um, understood. Um, is there anything that I can do for you in the way of updates or anything that you would like from us in terms of the investigation? I understand something's very important to the Wallace Corp as well. If you wouldn't uh, mind sending me frequent updates, I certainly would not object. Um, who knows what Wallace Corporation may be able to do to help you and Obviously, with this being so crucial to public perception, we'll be delighted to be kept in the loop. Of course. 
um, consider it done. Thank you very much. Um, she stands up. Um, I'll give her whatever the equivalent of my mobile number is in case she, there's anything else that she would like to get in touch about. Um, but otherwise, politely make my say my goodbyes um, and assure her that I will keep her in touch. Absolutely. I'll keep her in the loop. Yeah. Okay. Let us move on to the snake pit, uh, where Percival and Olsen are heading. Um, far to the northwest of the uh, the LAPD building in Sector 1 of Los Angeles. Um, uh, it's a variety club, uh, infamous for its strong drinks, five-star entertainment, and sordid history. Uh, back in 29, one of its performers was retired on the street, a fugitive Nexus 6 conspirator behind the... Uh, very infamous uh, 2019 Terrell Corporation murder spree. Uh, there's an owner who is known to you as known to most members of the LAPD called Taffy Lewis. Uh, he spun the infamy into free publicity, turning his sultry club into a sensation. The pit still attracts the best stage performers around, uh, mostly because half the audience works at the nearby agencies. Um on the way over there, you've got plenty of time to talk. If you if you want to talk, you'll be taking, I assume, taking a spinner together. It would be weird to go separately. Um, do you want to do any of that? Or are we having a uh, moment of quiet reflection on in the half an hour or so it takes to fly over? Um, I think Percival will want to say a, a few things. So, I like, yeah, um, the the name's Percival. Hi. So, uh, Olsen, good to, uh, good to be working with you, Percival. Um, appreciate you coming with me to this one. Um, I, I guess we don't know what kind of scene that we're going to see, but um, we know that it's not always a safe place. You yeah. look like a person that can handle yourself. Well, um, they're in worse places than the bloody snake pit. Have you ever been there? I haven't. No, uh, I'm still quite new to field work. For the best, it's not a good place. No, but strong it's... drinks, but not worth it. That's where we need to go. Um, yeah, I, I would really like to take a look at the crime scene. Um, I don't know how cooperative any witnesses will be. Yeah, me neither. Maybe I'll try and deal with the staff or whoever's there. You take a look around. If you're happy with that, that sounds great. I think it should work out. I mean, uh, at this time as well, there won't be that many people around. I guess they'll probably be closed. Maybe uh, a few workers, but we'll be all right. Okay, uh, your spinner arcs down through the um, there's some kind of mist and fog growing off the back of the the current environmental conditions. Uh, there's still in kind of a slight amount of drizzling rain, but it's sort of thinning in the air and giving way to this uh, unpleasant fog uh, that you land in the middle of. Um, when you do arrive, you can see that there is a, a police line outside the club. Uh, and there's also a small crowd of gawkers kind of looking over at the entranceway. Um, yeah. Before getting out, Olsen is going to make sure that her, both her badge, she's going to kind of pull back her coat, make sure that her badge and her gun are very visible. Uh, kind of puff herself up and uh, get ready to, to make her way through this crowd. Sure. Um, are you going to because you could definitely land to the side of it and like avoid the crowd and go in kind of like past the line uh, like you'll be in front of the crowd and you'll see them and they'll see you but or do you actually want to land a bit away and, and work because you just just because you said you were going through the crowd and I thought like maybe that's a thing you wanted to do specifically who's driving <laughs> uh, I don't know who is driving I I have a spinner I don't know if you do, so I'm I'm happy to I think we both, we both have yeah. spinners. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I mean, you can be driver. So up to you where we okay. where we land. Um. Yeah, wherever it's not going to disturb the crime scene, but it's going to be close enough to get to it with the, I guess, as little interaction with the. Yes, right. exactly that. Sure. So you land to the side, and you can get out and kind of walk. Like I say, you're between the line and the front of the club, um, so you can you can be seen, but they're behind the line, right? Um, yeah. There's also like a, a like barring, like a, a some translucent yellow plastic that's been laid over the the front door with like LAPD details over the front of it that you'll have to like slice to make your way through um, or detach to make your way through. But yeah, okay. you could. You, you can get in that way. All right. Are there are there any LAPD out here? No. Uh, well, okay. And um, and this happened inside the club, right? Like the crime scene is mm -hmm. inside. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I guess we'll go in. Okay. Are you going in as well, Olson? Yep. Probably take a look at the crowd. What what's the like mood of the crowd? Are they just like interested in looking at what is going on? Are they like sure. like angry at what's happened are they just are they happy about what's happened what's the mood i would say an absolute complete mix of all these things okay um a couple of people are jeering and kind of you know jeering offensive slang about about replicants some people look kind of more somber if you had to guess the majority the majority of people just look bored and curious um and are staring like would you say that you're like are you like observing the crowd in detail for a, a, a like a length of time like are you staying out here for a few minutes to do that or is it is this just getting a, a quick read i think a quick read because i'd want to go in with percival i wouldn't want to okay stay out here and let him sure. on his absolutely um yeah go ahead and uh, head inside then um inside the the pit it's empty uh apart from a uniformed officer um, and a man both of you recognize as, as, as the club owner, Taffy Lewis. Um, like I say, the guy's notorious. You know, you've seen him in magazines, you've seen him in papers. You maybe, if you've been in the snake pit, you may have even met him once or twice. Um, uh, there are two things to take into account here. Um, and both of them are, well, actually, I say that, but what I mean is one of them um, is something I'm going to put into the discord so you can get a closer look at it if you want um and we will i guess we'll start with having well it depends um how, how are you going to immediately handle this this situation i think we said something like percival's going to look around the club while olsen talks to you know people um and is that what you're immediately going to do olsen are you going to go over to taffy lewis and the the cop while percival starts taking a wander around is that the kind of thing we're doing it's definitely what Olsen would do. Okay. Yep. And yeah. Percival, per yeah. Yeah. Percival is uh, is happy enough looking first and ask asking questions later. Sure. Fair enough. Um, well, in that case, um, the quicker thing to do is to go up and talk to someone, right? So again, that's what we'll start with. Um, Taffy Lewis is an older um, an older man, a bit on the the, the short side nowadays, and you know, packing a bit of extra weight on him. He definitely has a kind of gruff, irascible persona. Um, as uh, Again, you may have encountered him before. Uh, yeah, you hear him as you as you kind of walk over. He barely gives you and Percival a glance and just kind of like turns to the, the, the cop in some frustration and, and kind of goes, well, that's all well and good. When am I going to be able to open my fucking club, pal? When we're fucking done here, Mr. Lewis. A, a agent of the LAPD has been shot here. We have no care about how long your club's going to be open or how long it's going to be closed. Just, you bring this on yourself. You got a hell of a sack to come into my place and talk to me like that, cop. What, what you, you want? Do about you want it? answers? You want cooperation? Because what I want is for you to buzz off, so I can be making my money again. I don't care what you want. We're here. We're here to find our colleague. Do what you like. You're not opening till we're done here. 
Right, right. Well, let me tell you this. Unless you sweeten your tone, you're getting no fucking answers from me. Look, if you want us out of here, you'll give us what we need. Any CCTV, any witnesses, you give them to us, we'll be done faster. Otherwise, we're going to take longer and longer. It's your choice, buddy. Um, can you make a manipulation roll for me, please? Okay. Not my not my strong suit. Uh, okay. I have a D8 and a D6. Let's see how we do. That's no successes and a one. <laughs> okay. Um, so again, if you push, you would get a point of stress. It's worth noting, by the way, that if replicants push, as as Inga was pondering earlier, replicants get points of stress from any push. Humans, like Olsen, if it's like a physical task, you'll actually take a point of damage, not a point of stress. Um, but this isn't physical, so you would get a point of stress from it. Um, do you want to push? Yeah, sure. Why not? It, it does seem pretty <laughs> important to get some answers from the club owner of the the, the crime scene. Yeah, I'll, I'll push. I had to get to reroll one die, so I mean, yeah, yeah, I'll, sure. We'll see. That is exactly a six. Nice. Uh, so you still take the point of stress. Um, it's up to you. Maybe that stress is just I don't know. Just the inter this interaction just feels like a stress, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe that's a, yeah, a bit heated, right? Uh, Taffy kind of like looks around, glances up at the cop who's just looking kind of amused by this, actually, uh, and then looks up at you with a, a very pugnacious expression and goes, "Fine, you what? You got you got photos? Show me the photos. Show me them." As in, he's asking for photos of like Leah and Sandor, basically. Okay, I'll. I guess I have them on my thing, my KIA. Yeah, you will. Do. You will do. Yeah. I'll. I'll bring them up and I'll. I'll show them to him. He kind of, kind of grabs your wrist just behind the KA and kind of yanks it a little bit closer and peers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw them both. They smelled like cops. They were at the bar, just observing. Not talking to anyone till the brawl. What what started this brawl? What what's the brawl about? Things got rowdy. It happens. In a fine establishment like this, I can't believe it. Why were they brawling? <laughs> Look, some of my clientele, they ain't so fond of Gym jobs, all right? Even though a bunch of them work here. This girl, this skin job, she goes up on stage, starts dancing. There's a group of, well, you know, they start jeering at her, catcalling. That gel guy, he was here with them, the magazine guy. Then they started brawling. Some tall, pale guy took exception to what they were doing. I've seen him at the club before. He's uh, he's called Styles. Things got rowdy. There was a loud bang. I wonder if you can detect what that might have been. Smoke cleared. Blade Runner on the floor panic, people run, and I call the cops. That's it. I didn't see you pull the trigger, and you know what? I don't fucking care either. I just want to get back to business, open my club. That enough? That's better than nothing. You got cameras? No, I don't got cameras. You know what people do up on that stage? I had cameras. They put me to the wall for obscenity. Shame. Anyone here might know? Anybody who works here might have seen anything else? 
Look, there's only one of my workers still here, and it was the girl who was dancing. Maybe she saw something from the stage. You're welcome to ask her. She's in the back. I will do. As far Thank as I'm you. concerned, I ain't telling you where any of my other... As you start walking, he's just kind of yelling about... He isn't going to give you any other details of his workers. Like, he's not going to tell you where they live. He's not going to... Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah. I'll walk, walk towards the back to find this uh, the worker. Sure. Uh, and while you're doing that, let's hop over to Stephen. Um, yeah. And... I we're now going to do a thing which I actually really like about the case the kind of published case files. So, uh, and I've put it in the Discord as well, Stephen. If you want to closer look, you've probably already yeah. seen that I have. Um, uh, so, this is the crime scene photo. It's not an actual photo, but it's your perspective on the crime scene, right? And literally, how investigating locations works in these case files is you tell me what you want to get a closer look at and I will tell you about it. And if I tell you about it in a really short, truncated and disinterested fan manner, it's probably not important uh, because I don't, <laughs> don't have a write-up for it. Don't um, do that thing that TTRPG players do all the time. <laughs> Understood. Sure. Sure. Um, um, but yeah, you could take a look. Take a look. What do you want to have a look? At? What draws Percival's eye quickly? Uh, okay, so the 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 like the the two features of the scene that jump out are uh, like the the blood spatter itself, mm -hmm. um, and that broken mirror, sure. um, and it's yeah. So I want to look at those, and I want to try to get an idea of uh, like where Sander would have been standing, where the shot may have come from where Absolutely. a bullet might have ended up and whether I can kind of gather any forensic evidence about the kind of firearm, um, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, well, shall we start with the blood stain? I mean, that seems sure. like the kind of centerpiece of the room that you go to first, right? Um, you know, it's a large pool of semi-dried blood <laughs> um, on the floor. It definitely, to you, there is like some spray between the large pool and the mirror, right? Um, so that would indicate to you, you know, and I'll give you, you're an analyst, I'll give you this one for free without rolls for sure, that he was shot roughly where the big blood pool is. You'd imagine he'd collapse and then bleed out on the floor. Yeah. And he was shot like some, he was between the mirror and the person who shot him, right? And that's what it looks like to you. Um, yeah. There is a lot of blood. Um, and it's it's kind of like messed around a little bit and like splattered a little bit. You're pretty sure the guy was shot, he collapsed, and he died. Like that, you know, which tallies with what Holden says, right? Sure. I, I know that so, I haven't I know that I haven't seen the body yet or heard what state that's in, mm -hmm. but I, I, I guess if I were to go and get that information later, I don't know if I could should ask this now or then, but like well, I, I I won't answer. You can ask, but I won't answer it now because that would be you weirdly time jumping. Okay, but like uh, like I guess um, I guess I have then I have a sense of direction and I and there is mm -hmm. an amount of blood, but do I have a sense of force? Do I have a sense of like range, for instance, between? No, like, absolutely none. Absolutely okay. none. I know that you, you as a player know, but Percival definitely doesn't know. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I I don't know enough in real life about how like blood spatter analysis, how much that can tell you about the kind of ballistics of the situation. But um, okay, neither do I. And and you know what? Like I think like in this circumstance as well, I think you've got the information you can get without bringing in cool, cool. specifics. You know. Okay. Can I go and have a look at the mirror and see if I can? F like it's smashed. Mm -hmm. Is that? Does that look like it might be a bullet? Is there a possible way to recover a bullet? Well, you know, you you take a look and your intuition, not necessarily intuition, but fairly straightforward logic, uh, is absolutely correct. Uh, um, the slightest investigation in the mirror yields the fact that at the center of that uh, cracked mass of glass is a deformed bullet stuck in the wall behind it. Uh, and yes, you can absolutely get it out. Cool. I'm going yeah, to assume that got, I like, have some little and out like tweezers yeah. or anything like that. A, yeah, a little yeah. bag and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay. Um, and 
um, uh, again, this is like me not really knowing what tools is going to be uh, are available to Percival, but uh, like in terms of um, any kind of uh, analysis of like the 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 discharge of the of what would have come from the weapon, like can I swab surfaces for anything, or is that sort of beyond the equipment probably... I've been provided with? It's probably slightly beyond what you could do now because for a start you don't know where to start right so you'd be like sure. swabbing the entire club um yeah. or at least a, you know an arc from the blood stain sure yeah. um you are a uh an analyst so you know what let's let's have a little bit of um let's have a and because you're an analyst i'll ask you for an observation role which is pretty pretty fucking good for you by the look of it it Two is yeah roles, this is yeah yeah, this is uh, this is my jam. This is why I yep. wanted to come to this place. It's two d twelve, absolutely, uh, an eight and a seven. So that's two successes. Two successes. There we go. Well, I'm going to give you a few things here. First of all, like if it was, if you were in any doubt, um, you have noticed that there are broken bottles, m more damage to the interior. Uh, it was definitely an extensive bar brawl. Um, and I will actually let you know without a vi visit to the RIT crime lab to analyze it um, that that bullet is a caseless caliber 44. Okay. Um, it's a heavy duty caliber. It's it's a big old bullet. Um, and you should know because there are several of them right now in your blaster. Okay. Um fantastic um i guess i i guess the other thing that i'm interested in the crime scene is like it, there's clearly been a brawl here right so there's going to be a lot of scuffle a lot of, a lot of, a lot of chaos i can see that there's some things on the bar that are kind of broken and chairs knocked over and stuff i presume that i'm not going to be able to do anything like a sort of king role like i'm not going to be able to follow no, no, the no. movements of any individual Ab Absolutely not. Not not only because of the chaos of the scene, but also because outside of fantasy worlds, that isn't possible. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like footsteps in like mud in a forest, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. On yeah, a sure. dance floor that would have been <laughs> full of fighting people. On a dance floor, pretty difficult. No, there's yeah. there's no like, no matter what. Like you've had two successes on an observation role. There, you could that's... be pretty pretty sure as a player, I've given you all I can give you here. Yeah, like, yeah. There's that's... no. There's no, yeah. There's no blood footprints. There's no, yeah. It, yeah. it as Taffy, he was right. It look, it's a very chaotic scene, and without a dedicated forensics team down here, you're not really. You don't think you're going to get anything else. And dedicated sure. forensics teams, not so much a thing that happens. No, um, we'd, we'd be LA as likely to get more seven. from just like asking witnesses and stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. like Ta yeah. Taffy's not going to stand for us getting a whole team down, and the LAPD probably isn't either. Probably not. Well, uh, speaking I mean, of which, a... yeah. Speaking of which, you saw Olsen walking into the back. Yeah. So while I've been looking around, I will have been. I'll have kept one ear out for for that conversation that would presumably have been happening simultaneously, and just like seeing sure. whether Taffy's account rings true. As a player, I think it sounds like it is did. It, it, at least... it does. But if you want, you can take a role to think to think you. Basically, to think if Percival thinks anything Taffy said jars with anything you're seeing here. Uh, yeah, that would no. be an insight role, which you're bad at, but you can absolutely do it. I am going to try, though. So that's a D10 and a D6. So let me just... Oh, the D10's not too bad. For some reason, I thought you had... Uh, that's no, 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 yeah, D10 is that's no successes, but uh, it's a 5 and a, and a 2. Do you want to push it? I, I kind of do. Yeah, I think I do. So that's, I take a stress point and then roll both of those again, right? You don't take a stress point automatically. You only take a stress point uh, on ones. Uh, from, if you roll any ones, yeah. I rolled a one and a six. Okay. <laughs> well, then take a stress point. But also, uh, he comes across as an, a, a real piece of work. But you think everything Taffy Lewis said absolutely ties up with what you're seeing here. You think there were a lot of people around the shop when it went off, which tallies with him saying he didn't see anything. It was chaos, you know. It, it but clearly people were brawling. Like it, it just ties up. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, then I think I'm going to go 
into that back room to go and speak to this dancer as well. Sure. Um, and since we are, uh, I, I'm happy for you to walk in to like part, like just at the beginning of uh, Olsen's conversation uh, with the dancer. Uh, you walk into this dressing room. Uh, she is dressed in a robe, um, smoking uh, quite intensely. Um, and I'm gonna like Olsen. You walk in, and she kind of like glances up at you. Um, she definitely doesn't seem particularly happy to see you, but you know, you can imagine that would be the case. Hmm. Olsen will pull her badge, LAPD. Um, uh, officer, C can I I help you? I'm sure Taffy. T t I I know he can be a bit, but I'm pretty sure he'll have told you everything you need to know. Well, there's a lot we need to know. I want to get every piece of information we can. Would you had a different perspective than what he does? What did you see? What happened? It was. It was just like. Just like Taffy said, I was on stage. There was a crowd. They started yelling. They started fighting. And then, then there was the gunshot. And I just ran back here. From the stage, you must have had a, a better view of what was going on. Did you see anyone pull a gun? Anyone I, holding I'd... a gun? I started running off stage when the brawl started. I heard the gunshot when I was halfway into this room. Hmm. Okay. And she kind of like her eyes widen a bit and she, she looks a bit more taken aback at Percival entering. Good morning. Oh, officer. What's your name? Iris. I'm not in trouble, am I? Well, not at the moment. We're, we're investigating what has happened to our colleagues. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know who your colleagues were. Uh, one of them is the man who left the bloodstain next door. I, I didn't go in and look. I don't want to see that kind of thing. Then I recommend you don't look. That's why I'll pull up the, the pictures of both of them, show them to Iris and say, Do you see these people? Did you see them interacting with anyone in particular? I yeah, I I saw them I saw them both last night. They were they were sitting by the bar. It looked like they were people watching you know like watching the crowd I'm more used to people watching me when it when it started i i think i saw them both move into the fight and there was the shot it was really really loud i was running already and then everyone else started running yeah yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I definitely. I know her more than him. But I, yeah, it was definitely both of them. Has she come here? Has she been here before? Oh, yeah, she's here all the time. Yeah. Yeah, she's here. She's She talks to people. Yeah. I don't Is know her, but anyone in particular she hangs out with here and uh mr lewis mentioned a person called styles yeah 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 she talks to styles he's all tall and, and pale he was in the brawl too i, I don't know what happened to him I, I don't really know him you know i but she she definitely talks to him a lot you don't know where we could find him no, I, I don't know him. Okay. The other times that Leah has been here, has she been mainly people watching, or did no, did, she did she stand comes, out? 
she, I mean, no, she does usually what everyone does when they come to the snake pit, only she doesn't care about what's on stage, but she drinks a, a lot. And she uh, she talks to a lot of people, like she's got friends here. Yeah. Okay. It's safe to say that Mr. Lewis would know her then. I don't know. Is she important? She got money. Mm -hmm. He might recognize her, but I don't know if he knows her. Okay. He doesn't. He doesn't really like cops, you know. Yeah, nice meet you. But okay, yeah. Is there anything else you remember that might help us? No, sorry. I if I knew, I'd tell you. I don't. I don't want to get into trouble. You know. It's a, it's a good gig here. Taffy he can he can be pretty angry, but he pays pretty well. Um, can I attempt an insight roll to get a sense of whether she's hiding anything? Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely can. Let's do an opposed roll with her, though. Okay. Um, I, I'm not feeling confident here, but... I will find her stat block. One second. Well, you could go ahead. Go ahead and make the insight roll and tell me how you do. Sure. So that's D10, D6. Uh, that's an eight and a three. So one success. One success. Uh, she achieved two successes. So you okay. cannot you cannot tell whether she is lying or not. Fine. Also more ask for her contact details. She like reference. She she looks a bit hesitant about that, but she does write them down for you. It's a nondescript apartment nearby. Um Sounds like one of the buildings, like above one of the agencies that are all in this area that you imagine Taffy Lewis uses. It's probably like like a lot of employers in Los Angeles. Like the people who work there will like live, you know, they'll have accommodation provided. That's yeah. one of the perks. I mean, you all of you live in a LAPD provided apartment, so yeah. Okay. Personal, you have anything else? No. No, I think we've got what we need to here. Okay. Um, all right, then. You, uh, I think you're, are you just heading out the snake pit? Finishing up? I think so. Okay. Uh, um, actually, I think, is, is um, Taffy Lewis still there? He is, yeah. I think um also might a little bit more friendly this time show him the picture of uh leah and say uh what what yeah 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 that's the broad yeah she comes here a lot i've seen her around i don't really socialize with you know you don't know if he's talking about cops or replicants. <laughs> you don't know which which one Taffy Lewis hates more. Olsen is disgusted with either. Either. <laughs> so, um, all right. Thanks for your help. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you leave the uh, snake pit, and I would like both of you to make an observation roll. But I would like Olsen to have an advantage on it. Now, this is one thing where I'm not actually entirely sure that I know precisely the uh, the rule for. Because I know you get like an extra die to roll. Um, I, but I most places think it's, it's summarized. The, Go on. Yeah, I think it's the attribute. I think it is as well, but I want to make doubly sure. Um. Yeah, you add a third base die to your roll of the same as the same type. 
Uh, oh, of the same type as your lower die. Oh, the lower, okay. So it's whichever one is lower. So can you tell me what your dice pool for this is, please, Sam? Mine is a D8 and 2D6. Right, so, yeah, so that's what you get, a D8 and 2D6. Yeah, if you could both uh, roll observation for me, please. I've got two successes. I got a six. And a, does a one do anything on a, if I haven't pushed? Okay. No, no, no. You, you only get stresses while... I'll, I'll read it out exactly, actually. Let me just clarify that because we're we're all getting used to this. Uh, mm. You suffer stress by pushing a skill roll um, and getting ones by going more than three shifts without downtime. Um, for each further downtime, you suffer a point of stress with the asterisk that um, replicants get an extra one they can go. Uh, and just from stressful situations. Um, so that's how we get them. But you, So you both rolled pretty pretty good there, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that small crowd of gawkers outside. Um, so you notice that most of them are different, right, to the people when you are going in. People are coming up, looking a bit, and then wandering off. One individual is definitely still there from last time. And he stands out because he is very tall and very pale. We need to talk to that guy. Agreed. Okay. Head towards the crowd and try and uh, get to the guy. Get to the guy. Uh, yeah, as you start walking towards the crowd, um, uh, the guy kind of like, I, I assume you're looking at him, and he'll sort of like tip his head up and sort of very subtly like lift a hand and go, hey, yeah, you, you, you want to talk to someone? I saw the whole thing. I saw the whole thing. I, I don't mind what you do. I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay. Here? Maybe uh, just a bit down the street. There's a there's a ramen place. I could eat. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, he walks over. It's it's just a, a small kind of like ramen stand. Um, he kind of like nods to the owner, who just like hand, hands him some ramen, just seemingly without paying, uh, and then kind of looks at both of you and go, not. Not you, not you. You you pay. Uh, I'll pay. Uh, you get some ramen. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's ramen. So, uh, someone died, right? Yeah. Someone that you know. Don't think so. I thought it was a guy who got shot. Ah. Talk us through it. Look, I'm in the club a lot. I was a guest there that night. Some replicant haters started shouting at the girl, the dancer. Brawl kicks off. I'm near the front. I'm a big guy. People are going to swing for me. I swing back at them. You know? Uh, yeah. You in there a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. around here is. What else you do, right? What else you sure. do for entertainment? You get trouble in there a lot? Yeah, sometimes. It's not the first time someone swung at me in the snake pit, you know? Okay. You know... Leah, right? Um, I do know Leah. Yeah, you got you got a picture. I know a couple of Leahs. Um, show the picture. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I know her. I yeah, said she she's there a lot. Yeah, Iris said she's seen you talking to her before. Yeah, probably. She's uh, she likes a drink. You no, are... And I don't mind listening to people when they're drunk. I got a friendly face, I guess. He doesn't particularly have a friendly yeah, face. Yeah. 
I guess. You see her last night? Yeah. Did I? No. No. No, I didn't. Didn't see her there at all. No. Not last night. Three nights ago, maybe? No, not last night. Just in case you're looking for holes, Iris said that... Iris didn't say that Leah was talking to Styles last night. No, but she, but her and Taffy both did spot Leah and um, mm-hmm. uh, Sander, Sander at the bar. Yes, they did. Yeah. So it's 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 somewhat unusual that Styles. It's fairly. Spot her. It was probably a fairly crowded. When you've been in the snake before, it's fairly crowded. It's certainly believable that he okay. didn't see. Okay. Whether you believe he... him is another matter. <laughs> You say you saw the whole thing, though. What? I didn't see the shooting. You know, I'm trying to fend off some... Look, I don't like them. I won't make a secret of it. They were there in force last night. That yell guy, you know, the publisher guy, I don't know. (laughs) They say the guy who was shot was a replicant, right? I don't know. I'm I'm just saying he was definitely there. But I didn't see her and I only saw uh I looked back when I was running out and I saw um the guy who got shot. I can you you need me to ID him? I'll look at a photo. Sure. I will show a photo. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen him in the snake pit before. But I see yeah, I saw him on the ground. Could see, could see he was a gunner. What happened? So the gunshot, everybody ran out Mm -hmm. to the street, including me. I was running out, look back. Your man there is on the floor, blood everywhere. How long did you stay around outside for? Oh, I went home. I went home. I only came back. You you saw me on the way in. I, I don't know. I go in there a lot. Curious. Or maybe I could help out. Okay. How many ways out of the snake pit are there? Is there a back door? Uh, let me check the snake pit map. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a back door. You just, uh, it's like to the, if you're on stage, it's right, like in the back area. I don't go back there often. Right. I don't work there. <laughs> We're looking for Leia. Is there anyone you know that she talks with, hangs out with? Any contact she has? I just see her at the pit. She's drunk. She's friendly. We talk a bit. I move on. Sorry, I can't help you with that. And any, you say uh, the publisher guy was there, any other members of that kind of crowd? Yeah, there were all kinds of those scum were there. Well, that's why it started, right? They were yelling at that girl on stage. People get angry about that. People throw down. They were all there, man. Okay. And if this buddy of yours was a replicant, I don't know. I sure as hell be pointing fingers. You know your jobs. Thank you. Just wanted to help. Just wanted to help. He kind of gobbles down the last of the ramen, uh, gives a nod to the uh, stall owner, and gives you like a, a little wave and walks off. Yeah, well, you guys can ask, where can we find you if we need to talk to you again? Uh, I'm like, if I'm not a suspect, I don't really want to tell you where I live, you know what I mean? But I'm around. Just ask for styles. People know me around here. I'm at the snake pit most nights. I'm sure I'll be back when it opens up again. 
Okay, it's good enough. Okay. Yep. I think, right. I think we're done here. We are done here. And you know what? That's actually tied up quite nicely with our first shift. But I want to do a little bit first. Let's talk about how we want to... How do we want to reconvene at the end of shifts? Uh, and this is just like, this honestly, more of an, like a mentally aesthetic thing than anything else. Do we want to like have a kind of shared call thing that we do, or do we want to um, do we want to be like we we've actually gathered at somewhere like somewhere physical in between places or back at the LAPD? What do we what do we kind of favor narratively for that? If anything. In person feels more charactery, more crunchy sure. Sure. to me. I don't know what about if, everyone else. Yeah. What if um before we all set off in our separate ways, we figured out somewhere that was the rough midpoint of where we were going and figured out a, an acceptable place to get lunch together? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that seems fair. Well, um, I think that the, the, the two places that are in mind for me are where where's the lab and like compared to where um the you know the LAPD main like the accessing mainframe stuff. Um are they far apart? Are they close by? Yeah, they're the same they're the same building. It's all in LAPD Tower. The the memory lab, Lilith. Oh, memory. sorry, the memory no, the memory lab isn't. Yeah. The mainframe is in is in LAPD Tower. Yeah. Uh, the memory lab. Um sorry, I'm just desperately trying to find sorry. it on it is hilarious watching Matt Giant Matt. All this map. Like, it's <laughs> Matt, so this, this big. Is, the it's like is... proper old school tourist stuff, isn't it? Like, hang yeah. on, I'm just gonna stop mm. stop here on the street street and I'm... like not like that. Oh I'm no, I'm taking off. I'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> that the memory lab is actually on this map. Don't take that as an indicator of its worth. This isn't an electric dreams map. This is just the map of LA, right? So it's only yeah. got like obviously it's gonna have Wallace Corporation and the LAPD and like the snake pit is a big um we didn't even mention that the snake pit is in the first film, including Taffy. Uh, that was my impression of Taffy um from from the film, right? So um I don't know where the memory lab is uh offhand. Okay. Yeah. Um however the mainframe like I say is it but if we want to pick somewhere that's in the middle of where you've all just been um I mean, so just somewhere in Sector Five, like like actually Chinatown is kind of in the middle of where you all are. That seems nice. Blade Runner flavorful, seems right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you go to like a um, I don't know. Let's let's quickly uh, put someone on the spot here if they don't ha have it. But um, uh, Inga, what's your favorite Chinese food? Uh... So let, let's just let's do noodles noodles all the way this is noo episode, noodles episode, episode noodles, noodles. <laughs> episode noodles <laughs> yeah. episode noodles um yeah there's a, like a, a noodle, noodles like, will end with noodles will end with noodles and it's another like, it's like a diner place like you know like a row with seats and stuff um let's just have you reconvene there in chinatown uh you've got like blaring like neon overhead of like vibrant primary co primary colors of sort of like um, very kind of like um, sort of like touristy, not that there's much tourism in this point, but that kind of like stereotypical like Chinese American iconography, right? So you've got like a lot of kind of dragons and, and various like uh, mythical beings and a lot of Chinese script and stuff like that. Um, all, all kind of like blaring in the sky above you uh, as you settle down. The rain is coming to a close. Um, and actually an uncomfortable, still, damp heat is now settling in over the city uh, as you move into the afternoon. Uh, and why don't we have all of you arrive at roughly the same time? Let's have a bit of a role play scene to catch up and then we'll we'll call it for the stream. If anyone wants to start. I don't want to talk to these people. How, what, did you, what did you find at the scene? Uh, we've got a bullet. Um, there was, uh, there was a brawl, um, human supremacists, um, heckling a, a performer, um, some other people stepped in, uh, seems Leah and, uh, Sander were at the bar, people watching, um, 
and I guess got tangled up in it somehow. But nobody seems to know where Leah went. Not that we spoke to. There was uh, apparently a bunch of human supremacists there. But uh, also interesting to know that Leah apparently goes there regularly, semi regularly, which is not normal for a replicant. It's not very replicant friendly for the most part. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a safe place. The... Carla Wallace Corp said that the, she said it was probably nothing, but she did sort of drop a hint that there might be some, there might be something odd. Uh, apparently, Leah went in for recalibration, and uh, I haven't had a chance to speak to Lilith Memory Lab yet, but she's uh, she was an earlier model N nine, and uh, it was Lilith Memory Lab who I don't know whether there's something that has led her. If there's something we can find out there that might have, might on like make it more obvious why she was there, if there's some sort of connection from implanted memories or something, I don't know. But or, or where she's gone, even if you can get an insight yeah. into her. Yeah. Um, or yeah, if she's. Do we have? Do, do, was there anything from the scene? Any CCTV or anything that would help indicate whether she left willingly or not? It's not the kind of place that Taffy runs. Was there my is Sorry. um Sorry, if, if I can if I could just insert that because we've talked about CCTV like internal CCTV. I would like here's another feature. This is a group role. And what I mean by what it means by a group role is that one person rolls. Um when you want to give a role to the whole group, it is just the person who's best at it that rolls. Um, which let me tell you. Having that instituted as an actual rule, uh, because it's what I usually do anyway, um, because I kind of cordially hate entire groups rolling for something unless it feels really right. Um, and I said it's the best person I had, but actually, you as a group decide who's going to roll. The role I'm going to ask for is a tech role. So that will be tech plus intelligence, right? So, I'm so as a group, oh, I'm yeah. old man yells at cloud like not me. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, 2D 12. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's very personal. Definitely not. Sounds me. like it might be personal. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, make give you give yourself a roll there. That's a nine and a three, so that's a success. It is. Um, internal CCTV often hard to come by. It is worth noting that uh, at the mainframe. There is another uh, area called the Esper Wall in which you can access a hell of a lot of surveillance cameras that are yeah. all over LA. I mean, on the streets, though. It's not internal, it's external. Yeah. But you could certainly that get a view of things happening outside the snake pit that night at the mainframe. That was right. going to be my next question was, is have, has anyone had a chance yet to look at anything for outside the premises? Um, be so, spe yeah. specifically curious about the back exit as well. I think I think we have a few things to find to, to go and interrogate the mainframe about this, the, the, the footage. I wonder if we can get anything about the case that they were on. Were they working a case last night? Um, gel, this human supremacist and the magazine that he works for whether there's a connection there just what what does the mainframe have to say about him um yeah. and these baseline tests yeah i don't think we're going to get a whole lot from these baseline tests i think um I'd, I'd be surprised if we got any info from that but it's worth running just in case um and yeah maybe seeing if there's anything that kind of connects with along with the memory lab info uh, but yeah i I desperately want to know whether Leah went willingly or not. I think that's going to be pretty key. Yeah, yeah. The manner I in which Leah left is 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 key to all of this. Yeah. Um, was there anything from the body? Well, uh, I can tell you that uh, the shot was fired point blank. It was a powerful round. It exited out the back of the body. Um, one thing I intend to follow up on with Coco, once he's had some time to analyze further, would be uh, I want to get a try and get a read on the height of the shooter and potentially the angle 
upwards or downwards or, or level to try and indicate their their position, posture, height, things like this. Would it, is that something that I will be able to estimate from where I found the bullet? Um, I mean, yes, potentially, but it would probably take more than like, it's not just a quick measurement of the body and a measurement of the 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 place in the mirror. You know, you'd have to do it on site. Again, it would be a dedicated forensics team. Okay, that's so. not something that you can't necessarily have. But you know what? If that's something you're interested in, uh, maybe you and I can take a look at what you could get with promotion points by spending okay. some promotion points next time. Basically, you are sent out into the world only with what you're carrying, and if you want anything more complicated than that. You got to spend promotion points to get it. Got so it. the full resources of the RDU. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Something you're you about it. Like you're not like paying for it. You are just you're cashing in favors. You're sure. Like, and yeah. it's also like your reputation. Like within, yeah, it, you're you're being repute like as a blade runner, they would just want you to get the job done yourself yeah, yeah. independently. And it's like if you go and say, I need a forensics team, they'll do it. They probably won't even grumble about it, but they'll go, huh? They needed a forensics team, huh? Sure. That's what using the promotion. Or like if the advice. if the lead doesn't pan out, then it's like Yeah. It's a reputational currency, yeah. which yeah. also you can also buy basically spend as XP. <laughs> Novak, I well, I don't know, Olsen and Percival if how you guys got brought onto this case, but Novak, you were on leave. It, it, do you have why were you brought off leave for this? I mean, the briefing I had was just to get you in for this emergency briefing. I didn't have any other info, info than that, but there's plenty of Blade Runners not on leave. Well, uh, honestly, I uh, I figured you would know better than me. All I know is I had to leave half a cup of noodles behind. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe they, yeah, not your call. Maybe they want to do, uh, I don't know, get someone with a lot of air miles on this case. I don't know. I honestly couldn't say. Can I, so, can I uh, like, sort of indicate for another cup of noodles for Novak <laughs> after the reminder of his forgotten noodles? Sure. Um, I just wondered if you might have had some sort of personal connection to this. Um, sounds like nothing. nothing no, that's this, this, is, uh, this is out of left field for me. If anything, you, Fenner, are the person with the closest personal thing that you know of because yeah. you worked with Sandor. One thing. Let me reframe what I said earlier. What I can tell from my trip to the lab is whoever shot Sandor got close to him without any resistance it would seem like or without difficulty uh which could mean one of two things you say there was a brawl maybe uh you know in the confusion that just happens or maybe it's because sandor knows the shooter the bullet that killed sandor was of a higher caliber than your average civilian round. Consistent with a 44? You found a 44. Found a 44. Which just so happens to be, and I realize many other firearms use 44, but RDU issued firearms fire 44s as standard. Leah, no body unaccounted for. Why wouldn't you come back to the station? And you know what? I think that's a good point to uh, to end the stream on there. Um, one thing I want to quickly address because it's very actually no, I'll, I'll wait till we till I do the questions, uh, the comments and questions. Speaking of which, if you have any comments and questions, please pop them in the chat and we will address them um, after I do a promo bit. Um, as for said promo, check down below for a number of links to Twitch to YouTube. Uh, we stream on Twitch. We end, that ends up on YouTube. Please check them out. Got lots and lots of actual play stuff on there, and a bits and pieces of other stuff too. Um, there's also links down there to our Discord, our Patreon, 
our merch store, our social media, all that uh, thrilling and exciting stuff. Um, and also heading into the chat right now is a um, lovely link to our ongoing Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we're creating a zine for the Troika system um, where you can visit a weird gonzo cosmic horror fantastical pillow fort of gargantuan size um, hanging amongst cold and different stars. If that sounds exciting to you because you're as weird as us, then um, please do give it a look, see if you like the campaign. And if you like the campaign, maybe even back it. I don't know. I'm not your mum. You do what you want. Um, we run a number of weekly uh, systems, uh, as we always do. Mondays is currently Warhammer. Wednesdays is, of course, currently this, Blade Runner. Uh, Thursdays is alternating between Wicked Ones and The Big Wet. We're playing Big Wet tomorrow in what might be the last episode or the penultimate one. Um, we also run one-shots on a monthly basis. We ran Death in Space this Sunday gone. We're running Dune and Troika next month. Um We've also got a series coming up in the not too distant future, like Yellow King and Return to Simbaroom and uh, other things, Call of Cthulhu. Um, yeah, so it's a good time on Telling Tales, with the caveat of a good time if you like really grim, horrible things happening to people. Um, so, you know, check all that out. Um, also, uh, thank you for the recent follows uh, to the orchestrator and Helium Hair. Thank you very much. We also got raided on Monday um, from uh, Legitimine. Legitimine. Um, I think they probably acknowledged that, but just in case, thank you as well. Um, okay, let's have a look at some comments and questions. Um, we had this from uh, from Stephen. Uh, can't find an appropriate emoji. Was looking for owl or noodles. Um, is there not an emoji for origami unicorn? That would be uh, a good one as well. Uh, Niche. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a comment, I see, I, I, this is, I'm getting confused. The only reason we call Stephen Stephen is to avoid confusing him with Steve, by the way. So the fact that I just called Steve's comment Stephen, and now I'm calling Steve, it's all a big mess. But the point is, this is Steve's pretty great. It was, it was a fabulous intro sequence made by Steve. So confusing. Thanks, Steve slash Stephen slash Steve. <laughs> Um, uh, Sam said doubling the Wednesday cat quota yes although my end of the cat quota tonight is uh, although I, uh, yeah we, well, we had two cats anyway right you, you could have tripled it but you were negligent yeah, could have tripled it. Yeah. He I, I, technically old. I have two cats and they did both appear oh. at different times uh, uh, so. we could be quadrupling the quota here guys yeah, we could be. Game. Uh, there's he contributing nothing <laughs> fortunately I'm just here the, to the, appreciate the cats <laughs> the Mac Cat quota is currently barred from the room during streaming uh, because many people who own, pet, know, own pets will know this. And if we get into the details of it, it will just creep and freak out non-pet owners. Some pets, towards the end of winter and the start of spring, get a bit annoying about certain in certain specific ways. Um, and my cat is currently like that. So very yowly, very annoying, um, very can't have any fluffy objects. <laughs> Let's just leave it there, shall we? Um, so, uh, one from Steve, wonder how Olsen is with a bow? Probably not. All your it's all your characters, <laughs> isn't it? I don't um, know. Olsen's, Olsen's pretty fighty, though, right? Like I, I have realized that I picked quite a fighty character, which is... Oh, Olsen's definitely the combat character, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, so, uh, someone had to, topic. but... I yeah. have it myself. Um, 42. Uh, how many of the individuals on screen are androids not talking about their characters? Knew it. Knew no it. comment. If I was, I wouldn't tell you. I, in all discernible ways, resemble a human. <laughs> it, ish. Uh, I liked this at the time from uh, from Steve in a shock twist. Fenner immediately retires Willem Novak. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's weird how all the soundscapes from the film just crash into my head. Yeah, uh, as I said to the the players in, when we were kind of gathering beforehand, but before we went live. Yeah, I I was going through that pre thing just with the soundtrack to the original Blade Runner playing in my ears. Um, yeah, uh, Holden was a Blade Runner in the 80s film. Yeah, as I said, um, yeah, 
at least he was shot in this game. He survived with artificial lungs. Yeah, I think there is there. I think in the briefing scene in the original film, Deckard is told that he's still alive, but he's like, you know, might basically probably won't make it. But I think the creators of this, yeah. And someone said, uh, Steve, uh, the Blade Runner RPG has been written to fit nicely into the movie continuity, as far as I can tell. It's been done real well. Like, I've, uh, I don't need to rewatch the first film because it's embedded into my fucking forebrain. But uh, I rewatched uh, 2049 today, and I've obviously read this through a few times. It's really well done. Like, they have picked up a lot of stuff half mentioned in the films and kind of ran with them to like build out the world and stuff. It's, it's really well done. Yeah. Um, and I know some members of the group had, were very effusive about how they built the setting in the, um, in the book when they're not huge fans of the films right yeah i was one of them i sorry i i think there is a lot of stuff in the film that you kind of look at and go that's incredibly like stylish and and it looks great but like what is it why is it there and as soon as you dive into the book that that just immediately kind of blossoms out into the whole you you get the whole world building and the setting and just you know why you see the things that you see in the films and and that that's like has really helped to ground this world for me for sure yeah i i because i like i i've not seen 2049 yet um and i've seen the original blade runner a couple of times and like i don't like i don't hate it i don't love it it's not like you know one of my absolute favorite films like i like a lot of the ideas of it i think more than i like the film itself if that makes sense like the ideas of replicants and what that means and the kind of philosophy of that in the kind of all the all the awesome stuff that good like sci-fi does in terms of like making you think about what that means for humanity and how we understand stuff and i don't know whether it's just partly the nature of like an rpg versus a movie but like it's nice to kind of explore some of that stuff in a way that you don't fully get to see in the movie i don't know whether more of that comes up in 2049 i'll watch that this weekend um but yeah it's uh but i think You're that's kind of nice that. as well you you do just get to dig like kind of like you say you get to poke around those things that or maybe half mentioned somewhere and stuff. Which is yeah, you cool. can explore them with agency as well and with yeah. a character investment, which is often, yeah. Um, we got this from Lowen. Uh, have you seen the official Blade Runner short movie Next Dawn uh, about how Wallace convinced politicians to allow replicants on Earth again? Um, yeah, and uh, indeed, as Stephen said, uh, Sam, that, that Sam, uh, posted this on our private Discord uh, this week, uh, and I don't think any of us had seen it before. Uh, and I watched it and was like, holy shit, this is literally talking about exactly the stuff that like the Electric Dreams is talking about, like the situation and they've only been back on the streets for a year and stuff. Yeah, really, it's really good. It's really very good. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what else have we got? Um, anything else? Anything else? Oh God, we've got so much more. Um <laughs> Inga, uh, anybody who has to deal with members of the public as part of their job knows it's inherently stressful, especially if it's Taffy Lewis. Um, I, I love the way that, that Sam dealt with Taffy there, just like straight for the jugular. Just like, yeah. that intro. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Like, from the off, I was like, yes! Awesome, <laughs> go! Yes! <laughs> Yeah, I don't absolutely. appreciate Taffy Lewis is around here. <laughs> um, yeah, don't kick food. It's a group role, which means one person rolls. So language <laughs> truly evolves over time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it does take a bit. It's called a group role, but it's. I get why though, because it's like saying the thing. But I, I will happily wax lyrical on my preference for that. Um, I think I've done it several times on the channel already, but ultimately, it's one of my bugbears about role playing when everyone just rolls to make a success on something that you th if you think about it is not something everyone will be doing suddenly as a group in a unified fashion it's one thing when it's like a, a big you're about to be ambushed and everyone rolls for awareness right that's fine but when it's like one thing that would be attempted like if you think about how weird it would be to have a group of people and one person probably the most competent at the thing tries it and then everyone else forms an orderly queue behind them and tries it once one after the other it just feels off and weird to me yeah, like, let me try and pick pick the lock on this cabinet and then it's like you've got the professional and then, everyone just does it in an order. And then everyone's like well there's a chance <laughs> 
But the yeah. other thing that drives me crazy, though, it's like in, in games is when they get like GMs who are like real sticklers for like, if you mention something out of character, like, you know, someone's like, oh, well, should somebody try lock picking that? And they're like, you're the one who mentioned it. So it must be you who does it, regardless of whether that makes any sense. Like the concept oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. choose who is the most appropriate person. Like, because yeah. like, I personally, I don't see it as like metagaming to be like, okay, right, who's got the best stat for this? Because it's that's it's no, an no. abstraction for information we yeah, know. Yeah, ask them. About each you'd other. be like, yeah. hey, lock lock pick person. Do you think you could pick this? Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. The, the one time I do do a bit of that when that's exception is if it's like and not necessarily an action, but thinking about something and making the role yeah. to see if they've made like a connection. And then I'm like, well, you're the one who mentioned it, so you get to roll to see if you make the connection. But like yeah. other, yeah, the actual yeah. action. Or like if go, there's that okay, kind of well, instinctive, you that, you've got to just, gonna do it. things are suddenly yeah. happening. But when you can actually like chat, chat as a group and plan things and stuff, like it's just, yeah, totally makes sense. Yeah. It feels Absolutely. very common sense. Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, we've got uh, so, lots of questions tonight uh, and good comments. Steve, uh, also worth noting, you can make queries or upload evidence data to the mainframe remotely via your KA. Yes, you can. But I would point out one thing. If you are making queries and gathering data, if you do it at the mainframe, you get an advantage on all your roles. So it's definitely worth, if you've got a bunch of stuff, it's definitely worth spend someone or some people spending a shift there to do it, to get those good roles, I think. Um, uploading data, that's something we're actually going to talk about next time. What we're going to open each session with after our recap, we're going to talk about two things. Number one, what data you gathered and what amount of it you uploaded to the mainframe. Mm -hmm. There may be situations where you don't want to upload things to the mainframe. There may be situations where some of you want to and some of you don't. And that's going to be an interesting day. Um, the second thing is promotion points and humanity points. We'll do it when we do the recap. Because I feel that's actually a nicer point to do it. To like like with a bit of clarity on what's happened and we'll we'll give you those points to 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 use. Um is there anything else? Uh RPG design is this a prequel to the movie or sequel? Sorry if already explained. This takes place uh sort of very much between the two movies. So Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner is set in 2019. This is set in 2037. And Blade Runner 2049, I don't know where that's set. It's obviously set, yeah, in 2049. Um, so, yeah, it's, yeah, as Steve said, it fits between two films. Yeah, it's 12 years before 2049. So it's like, it's a very similar thing, though. Like, 2049 is kind of the end result of the, this world we're seeing here. It's very similar, but, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much to my lovely players, as always. Uh, thank you very much to everyone watching. Uh, we'll be back next week for more Blade Runner. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, take care. Stay safe. Goodbye. Bye.